Welcome to the Quick Pro Guide for shooting video with the Nikon D7100. This is a great camera that will capture amazing HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this guide. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. You can watch it entirely in one sitting or by chapter. The functions and features of the D7100 that we cover are designed to give you a solid working knowledge of your camera. With this new information, you'll be able to improve your ability to capture great movies in a variety of shooting settings. Let's get started. Let's begin with an overview of the basics of the movie mode on the D7100. We'll discuss many of the camera's movie features in greater detail later in this guide. When you're recording movies or using live view with your D7100, you'll want to avoid directing the lens toward the sun as this can seriously damage the camera's internal components. To record a movie, first make sure that the Live View Movie Selector is set to Movie and press the Live View button. The Live View image will be displayed on the LCD. Now simply press the shutter button halfway to focus. When the focus point turns green, the area within the focus point will be in focus. To begin movie recording, simply press the Movie Record button and press it again to end recording. Your movie file will be saved as an MOV file on the memory card. To view a movie that you recorded, press the Playback button and if necessary, scroll to the movie that you would like to play. Press the OK button to begin movie playback. Although you'll probably want to do most of your movie editing on your computer, you'll also be able to do some basic movie editing in camera. To edit a movie, begin the movie playback. At the point that you'd like to have your movie clip start or end, press the down button on the multi-selector to pause the movie. Then press the I button. Select choose start endpoint and use the multi-selector to make your selection. Press OK. You can use the sides of the multi-selector to adjust the length of the movie clip. The section of the movie shown in the gray in the bar at the bottom of the screen is the section that will be deleted. The last thing that you'll need to do is delete the extra frames. To do this, simply press the up arrow on the multi-selector. Here you can choose to save the trimmed movie file as a new file, or you can overwrite the existing movie file or you can choose Cancel or Preview. We'll select Save as New File and select OK. Note that selecting Overwrite Existing File will erase the original movie and replace it with the trimmed version. With the D7100, you can also save one frame from a movie file as a JPEG to the memory card. To do this, simply enter the movie playback at the frame that you'd like to save Press the down button on the multi-selector to pause the movie. Press the I button to view the movie edit options and select save selected frame. Now simply press the top button on the multi-selector. When the dialog pops up, select yes and press OK. There are many important movie mode settings that can be accessed in the camera's menu systems. To access these settings, press the menu button and use the multi-selector to select the shooting menu. Here, scroll to the movie settings option and press OK. We'll discuss each of these items in greater detail later in this guide. We'll just discuss a brief overview now. The first item is frame size, frame rate which will allow you to choose the movie's frame size or resolution as well as the movie frame rate. Next, there is the movie quality option, which will allow you to choose the movie bit rate. The next option is microphone, where you can make adjustments to the camera's microphone settings. The last option in the movie settings menu is destination, which will allow you to select the memory card that you would like the movies to be saved to. 
With the D7100, you can customize many of the camera's buttons and controls to suit your needs for movie shooting. The customizable features are found in the Custom Setting menu, menu G, Movie. The first three options are Assign Function button, Assign Preview button, and Assign AEL-AFL button. Select the button you'd like to customize and press OK. Press the right side of the multi-selector to view the options. The customizable settings for all three of these buttons are the same. The first option is View Photo Shooting Info, which will display the shutter speed, aperture, and other settings when the button is pressed. To return to the standard movie recording display, you can press the button a second time. The next option is AEAF Lock, which will allow you to press and hold the button to lock the focus and exposure. Next, there is AE Lock Only, which will allow you to lock only the exposure setting while the button is pressed. Next, there is AE Lock Hold. With AE Lock Hold, you can press the button once to lock the exposure, and then press it a second time to release the exposure lock. Next, there is AF Lock Only, which will allow you to lock the focus while the button is pressed. The last option is AF On, when AF on is selected, you can press and hold the button to use the camera's autofocus in the same way as pressing the shutter button halfway. You can also select none, which will disable the button during movie mode. The final button that can be customized for use in the camera's movie mode is the shutter button. For this button, you can select one of two different options. First, you can select Take Photos. When this option is selected, pressing the shutter button completely during movie recording will end movie recording and take a 16 by 9 aspect ratio still photo. The other option, Record Movies, will allow you to press the shutter button halfway to enter the live view in movie mode. Then you can press the shutter button completely to start or end movie recording. Before you get started recording movies with your camera, there are a few things that you'll want to know about movie recording settings, including frame sizes, frame rates, and scanning methods. It's important to understand a little about each of these options so you can choose the best settings for your situation. First, let's talk about the frame size or resolution options that are available on your camera. You can record movies in two different resolutions, 1920 by 1080 and 1280 by 720. Each resolution is indicated by the number of pixels that are in the frame. So 1920 by 1080 means that the image is 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. This resolution has an aspect ratio of 169, which means that the ratio of the width to the height is 16 to 9. Movies that are recorded at 1280 by 720 are only about two-thirds the width of a 1920 by 1080 movie, and they also have an aspect ratio of 16:9. So what's the trade-off? Movies that have more pixels, like the 1920 by 1080, provide a much crisper image, but they also create a much larger file size. Now let's talk about frame rate. Frame rate refers to the number of images that are recorded per second. The D7100 allows you to choose from several different frame rates depending on the frame size that you have selected. It's important to note that frame rate does not affect exposure. When you're choosing a frame rate for your movies, you'll want to understand what effects different frame rates will have on the finished movie. A higher frame rate, like 60 frames per second, is great for capturing fast action videos. It allows you to see the action with much better clarity and crisp detail. A slower frame rate, like 24 frames per second, will give your video a softer look. Traditional film movie cameras record at 24 frames per second, and this frame rate has the distinctive cinema look that you would associate with the big screen. Whatever frame rate you choose, you'll want to remember a higher frame rate equals a larger file size. To access the camera's movie frame sizes and frame rates, enter the camera's shooting menu. 
Here, scroll to Movie Settings and press the right side of the multi selector. Select Frame Size, Frame Rate and press the right side of the multi selector again. Here, you can choose the movie recording settings you'd like. The top two options are the camera's interlace scanning method options, and they are available only when the camera is set to use the 18 by 12 millimeter image area. These numbers indicate the frame size or resolution and these numbers indicate the frame rate. The I and the P indicate the scanning method. In addition to resolution and frame rate, you should also know a little about the scanning methods. There are two scanning methods, interlaced and progressive. With the interlaced video, each frame of video consists of two fields. One field is comprised of the odd horizontal lines in a frame called the odd field or top field and the other is comprised of the even horizontal lines called the even field or bottom field. These fields alternate to form one complete image. When shooting in 1080 60i or 60 interlaced, the camera is actually generating 30 odd fields and 30 even fields per second. This gives the video a total of 30 complete fields per second. Interlaced video is best suited for viewing on a television. Note that interlaced video may exhibit what is referred to as combing when it's viewed on a computer monitor or other progressive scan devices. Progressive scanning is different than interlaced because it scans the entire picture line by line in sequential order from top to bottom. When you shoot in 1080, 60p or 60 progressive, the camera is generating a full 60 frames of video per second. This produces a smoother, or more detailed image that is great for viewing fine details. To enable both of the scanning method options, you'll need to select the 18 by 12 millimeter image area. To do this, enter the shooting menu and select image area. Here, select the 1.3x option and press OK. To select one of the interlaced scanning method options, scroll to the movie settings option and select frame size, frame rate. The top two options, 1920 by 1080, 50i and 60i are the interlaced options for the D7100. For the D7100, the movie quality setting controls the camera's movie bitrate. When the camera is recording video, it converts moving images into digital information called bits. The amount of data recorded in a given second is called the bitrate, and it's measured in megabits per second, or Mbps. The higher the megabits per second, the more data you are recording, and the higher the quality of your video. While recording at a higher bitrate may produce superior quality video, it also takes up more space on your memory card. A higher bitrate really shines when shooting video with a lot of action. When there's a lot of camera or subject movement, the finer details of your video can appear blurry or pixelated when a lower bitrate is used. When you're recording movies with very little fast action, you can use a lower bitrate. To choose the camera's bitrate, enter the shooting menu, scroll to Movie Settings, Movie Quality, and use the multi-selector to choose High or Normal. The High Quality setting will use a 24 megabits per second bitrate, and the Normal Quality setting will use a 12 megabits per second bitrate. Now let's discuss exposure. Exposure is the term used to refer to the overall brightness of the image or movie. When an image or movie is too bright, it's overexposed. When it's too dark, it's underexposed. The exposure of the movie is determined by three different camera settings, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. When all three of these elements are in proper balance, your movie will be properly exposed and have good detail in shadow and highlight areas. Let's first take a look at shutter speed and how different settings will affect the look of your movie. Similar to still photography, the shutter speed will help determine the sharpness of the motion in your movie. 
Also, like in still photography, the shutter speed will impact the overall exposure or brightness of the movie. When you're using the camera's movie mode, you can adjust the shutter speed when the mode dial is set to manual shooting. Then, make sure that the Live View Movie Shooting switch is set to Movie and press the Live View button. You can rotate the main command dial to select the shutter speed while watching the shutter speed display at the bottom of the LCD monitor or on the LCD panel. To create smooth motion, a good rule of thumb for shutter speeds when shooting movies is to use the 180 degree shutter rule. This rule simply states that you should first multiply the frame rate by 2. So a 24 frames per second frame rate multiplied by 2 would be 48. Next, simply put a 1 over the number. So you would have a 1 over 48. Since there is not a 1 48th of a second shutter speed, you would choose the next closest number, which would be 1 50th of a second. If you were shooting a 30 frames per second frame rate, you would choose a 1 60th of a second for a shutter speed. And if you were shooting at a 60 frames per second frame rate, you could choose a 1 120th of a second for the shutter speed. Using the 180 degree shutter rule will help you ensure that your movie will have a smooth motion with minimal blur. Sometimes you may want to use a different shutter speed if you're trying to create a specific effect for your movie. For example, if you want to intentionally blur the motion for a creative effect, you would want to choose a slower shutter speed. Or if you want to give your movie an edgy look and feel, you could choose a very fast shutter speed. In addition to controlling the smoothness of the motion in your movie, the shutter speed will also have an impact on the overall brightness of the movie. Now let's take a look at aperture and how different settings can have different effects in movie mode. Similar to still photography, the aperture will help determine the depth of field in your movie. Depth of field is the term used to describe the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that appear acceptably sharp in an image. When only a small area or subject in an image is in focus, it's said to have a shallow depth of field. This effect is achieved by using a smaller f-stop number. When everything in both the foreground and background is in focus, an image is said to have a long depth of field. For a long depth of field, choose a large f-stop number. Also, like in still photography, the aperture setting will impact the overall exposure or brightness of the movie. With the D7100, the aperture setting for movie shooting must be set before the camera enters the movie mode. Make sure that the Live View movie shooting switch is set to Live View, then press the Live View button. You can rotate the sub-command dial to make adjustments to the aperture setting while watching the aperture display at the bottom of the LCD monitor or on the LCD panel. Depending on the depth of field you're looking for, you may choose to use a smaller or larger f-stop number. If you choose a low f-stop number, like f3.8, the background will appear blurry in the movie. If you choose a larger f-stop number, like f16, the background will be more crisp. When you have selected the aperture setting that you would like to use for movie shooting, rotate the Live View Movie Shooting Switch to Movie. After you have selected the shutter speed and aperture settings, you may find that the exposure or overall brightness of the movie needs to be adjusted. To do this, you can make adjustments to the ISO settings. To change the ISO setting, the camera's mode dial must be set to manual. Then simply press and hold the ISO button and rotate the main command dial while you're watching the LCD monitor or LCD panel. You can choose from ISOs ranging from 100 to 6400, as well as several different high settings that are the equivalent of ISOs 8000 to 25600. As with still shooting, the ISO setting controls the image sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the number, the less light that is required for a properly exposed movie. The lower ISO settings, like 100 and 200, have less sensitivity, and the higher settings, like 800 and 1600, have more sensitivity. So if the movie appears too dark, you'll want to choose a higher ISO setting to increase the overall brightness and create a properly exposed movie. 
it's a good idea to set the ISO speed to suit the ambient light setting that you're shooting in. When you increase the ISO speed to a higher number for lower light, a narrower aperture setting can be used. Keep in mind, however, that the higher the ISO setting, the more digital noise or grain may be introduced into your movies. You'll want to experiment with a camera's ISO setting to become familiar with their range and control. Here is a guide that will help you have a basic idea of what ISO settings to use in various situations. When you're outdoors in full sun, use ISO 100 to 200. In the shade, on an overcast day, or indoors with lots of window light, use ISO 400. ISOs 800 and higher should be used indoors for action shots or in other low light conditions. The level of digital noise will depend on the ISO setting. Typically, digital noise starts becoming noticeable at ISOs of 1000 or higher. If you're shooting a movie and you find that digital noise is too noticeable, you can make adjustments to other settings to enable you to select lower ISO numbers to reduce the digital noise. One setting that you can adjust is the aperture. Choosing a smaller f-stop number will allow more light to enter the camera, which will reduce the need for a higher ISO setting. If a smaller f-stop number is not available, or if a smaller f-stop number will not provide the depth of field that you need for your scenario, you may be able to make adjustments to the shutter speed. Choosing a slower shutter speed will allow you to use a lower ISO setting in these scenarios, which will help reduce digital noise in the movie. As discussed, a general rule of thumb is to choose a shutter speed that is double the frame rate. However, there may be times that a slower shutter speed can be used to create a small amount of motion blur for artistic effect in your movie. If a slower shutter speed will not give you the effect that you need for your scenario, and the aperture setting cannot be adjusted to allow more light to enter the camera, you can try to increase the light in your scene using studio lighting, moving to an area with more window light, or even using lamps in your home. You can use exposure compensation to adjust the overall brightness of your movie. Exposure compensation is available in the camera's programmed auto, shutter priority, aperture priority, or night vision effects modes. To adjust the exposure compensation, press and hold the exposure compensation button while rotating the main command dial. The compensation amount will show on the bottom of the LCD monitor in yellow. When the plus sign on the exposure compensation is shown, the movie brightness will be increased by the increment shown on the bottom of the screen. When the minus sign on the exposure compensation icon is shown, the movie brightness will be decreased by the increment shown on the bottom of the screen. When you're shooting movies with your D7100, there are several ways to ensure good focus. The camera's sophisticated autofocus system will help you get good focus in many situations, but there may also be times when you find that you need to use the manual focus to ensure that the focus is as you intended it. Let's discuss the autofocus options now. First, you'll need to choose the camera's AF mode as well as the AF area mode. To choose the AF mode, press and hold the AF mode button and rotate the main command dial. In movie shooting, you can choose from AFS or single servo AF and AFF or full time servo AF. The AFS or single servo AF focus mode is best suited for stationary subjects. The focus will be locked using the selected focus point when the shutter button is pressed halfway. Use this mode when you're recording video of stationary subjects or when you want to minimize the audio noise that is recorded when the camera's lens continuously focuses. The other autofocus mode that is available in live view and movie mode is AFF or full time servo. This is a great mode to use for moving subjects. Using the selected focus point, the camera will continually focus even without the shutter button being pressed. Focus will be locked when the shutter button is pressed halfway down. After you've selected the autofocus mode, you'll need to choose the autofocus area mode. 
To do this, press and hold the AF mode button and rotate the sub-command dial. In live view and movie modes, there are four different AF area modes. Face priority, wide area, normal area, and subject tracking. The AF area modes determine how the camera chooses the focus point or area to use when autofocusing. For the wide, normal, and subject tracking AF area modes, use the multi-selector to move the focus point to the desired area of the frame. You can press the OK button to quickly place the focus point in the center of the frame. If you select face priority, the camera will automatically find and focus on faces in the frame. Wide area is best suited for landscapes and other non-portrait subjects. Use normal area when you want to pinpoint focus on a specific part of the frame. Using a tripod will help you make sure that focus stays exactly where you intend it. This is a great mode to use when you're shooting movies with small subjects. The last AF area mode is subject tracking. This mode is great for moving subjects. You'll need to position the focus point and press the shutter button halfway to focus, then press the OK button. This will tell the camera to track the subject in the focus point as it moves across the frame. To end subject tracking, press the OK button again. In all of the AF modes and AF area modes, the focus point will blink while the camera is focusing. When focus has been achieved, the focus point will stop blinking. If the camera cannot focus, the focus point will blink in red. When you're shooting movies with the D7100, you may find that there are times when the autofocus does not provide the sharpness and clarity that you're looking for. In these situations, using the camera's manual focus can help you get sharp focus. To use manual focus on the D7100, you'll first want to switch the focus switch on the lens and the camera body to manual focus. Now you can simply rotate the focus ring on the lens until the image on the LCD is in sharp focus. You may find that it's difficult to see whether or not the area of the image that you'd like to be in focus is sharp. The camera has a magnified view feature that makes it easier to adjust the focus for detail areas prior to shooting movies. To use this feature, make sure that the camera is in movie mode and that the camera is set to use manual focus. Now, frame the image in the way that you'd like your movie to be recorded. After you have set the framing and composition for your shot, press the playback zoom in quality button once or multiple times to zoom in to see the desired level of detail in the image. Use the multi-selector to scroll to the area of the image that you'd like to adjust focus for. Now rotate the focus ring on the lens to adjust the focus until it's sharp. Now you can either press the playback thumbnail ISO button once or multiple times to exit the magnified view, or you can simply press the movie record button. Once the movie record button is pressed, the camera will automatically exit the magnified view. As with still image shooting, the quality of your movies will be impacted by the white balance and overall color and tone of the movie. You can use the camera's white balance and picture controls to adjust the color and tone to your liking. Let's discuss white balance. White balance is determined by the color temperature of light sources, which is measured in degrees Kelvin. The higher color temperatures in the area of about 7500 Kelvin down to 5600 Kelvin are usually found in situations like a sunlit or cloudy day. These shooting situations have a greater amount of cool blue tones and lesser amounts of warm red tones. To compensate for the coolness of the color, the camera will add warm tones to help balance the color temperature. Lower color temperature situations are measured in the area of 3500 Kelvin down to 1900 Kelvin and are found in lighting situations like standard lighting from a tungsten light bulb or candlelight. These types of shooting situations are found on the lower end of the spectrum and produce greater amounts of warm red tones and lesser amounts of cool blue tones. There are two ways that you can select a white balance setting. First, you can press and hold the white balance button while rotating the main command dial. 
In live view and movie mode, the settings will appear on the control panel and LCD monitor as they're selected. The other way to select the white balance is through the menu system. Enter the shooting menu and select white balance. The first option is auto white balance. With this setting, the camera will attempt to automatically adjust the color temperature. The auto white balance setting has two different options, normal and keep warm lighting colors. The next white balance setting is incandescent. This is a good setting to use when you're taking pictures under common light bulbs. It reduces the reddish tones in a picture. This setting is marked with a light bulb icon. The fluorescent light setting is great for taking pictures under fluorescent lighting. With the D7100, you can choose one of seven different fluorescent white balance options, depending on the type of fluorescent light you're shooting under. The next white balance setting is direct sunlight. Direct sunlight is great for taking pictures in the sunlight. This setting is marked with a sun icon. The next setting is the flash setting. Use this setting when using the built-in or an external flash unit. The next setting is cloudy. Use this setting when taking pictures on days that are overcast. Use the shade setting when you're taking pictures in the shade. It reduces the bluish tones in a picture. You can fine tune any of these white balance settings to make them more warm toned or cool toned depending on your lighting conditions. To fine tune any white balance setting, other than the K or PRE, in the white balance menu, you can simply press the right side of the multi-selector to show the color temperature grid. Use the multi-selector to place the cursor in the area of the grid you'd like. You can increase the green, amber, magenta, or blue in the image. When you're finished, press OK to confirm your selection. You can also fine tune the white balance settings while you're shooting. Again, make sure that the white balance is not set to K or PRE. Now simply press and hold the white balance button while rotating the sub command dial. You'll see settings for values A1 through 6 and B1 through 6 on the control panel. The A settings will increase the amber or warm tones in the image, and the B settings will increase the blue or cool tones in the image. The higher the number value, the more amber or blue tones will be added to the image. So the A1 setting will slightly increase the amber tones, while the A6 setting will more dramatically increase the amber tones. There are two other white balance settings under the white balance option in the shooting menu. The next setting is choose color temperature, and it's marked with a K icon. Use this setting when you know the color temperature of the lighting that you're shooting under. You can choose the color temperature in the menu system or by pressing and holding the white balance button while rotating the sub command dial and watching the control panel. The last icon is the preset manual or custom white balance option. Use this setting when you want to manually set the white balance for a specific light source for the best accuracy. There are two ways to set a preset manual white balance. The first method is the direct measurement method and it's done by taking a picture of a white card or object for the camera's electronics to reference. You can use a commercially available white card or an object like a shirt or a piece of paper to achieve good results. To set a preset manual white balance, select PRE on the control panel using the white balance button and the main command dial. With the D7100, you can store up to six values for preset manual white balance settings. To select one of the preset manual settings, press and hold the white balance button while rotating the sub command dial. There are options D1 through D6. Select the preset number that you'd like to save the white balance reading to. Then press and hold the white balance button until PRE starts blinking on the control panel. Now fill the viewfinder with the white or gray object and press the shutter button down completely. If the white balance measurement was successful, data acquired will appear on the LCD monitor and good will show on the control panel. Otherwise, a flashing no GD will appear and you will need to take the white balance reading again. To select one of the previously saved presets, make sure that the white balance setting is set to preset and press and hold the white balance button while rotating the sub command dial to make your selection. 
The other method for setting a preset manual white balance is the copy from existing photograph method. And it's done by selecting an existing image on the memory card for the camera to copy the white balance data from. To set a preset manual white balance from a photo on the memory card, first make sure that the white balance is set to PRE, then navigate to the white balance option in the shooting menu, scroll to preset manual, and press the right side of the multi-selector. Here, select the preset you'd like to save the white balance data to, then press the playback thumbnail button. Options for the preset you selected will be shown. Scroll to select image and press the right side of the multi-selector. The camera may prompt you with an overwrite warning if you have already selected that preset for use. You can choose to use a different preset or you can overwrite the one that you have selected. To overwrite, select Yes and press OK. Now you can choose the image that you'd like the camera to use for the white balance. When you're finished, simply press OK. The picture controls are another feature that will allow you to customize the look of your movie. There are six picture controls including standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, and landscape. The picture controls on the D7100 are easily accessed by pressing the camera's I button and using the multi-selector to navigate to the set picture control option. Here you can choose the picture control you'd like. The standard picture control is the default setting and it offers standard processing and balanced results. This is a good picture control for general situations. The neutral picture control will produce colors that are natural and subdued. The vivid picture control is great for movies with primary colors that you'd like emphasized. The monochrome picture control is useful when you would like to record black and white movies. Note, movies taken in this setting cannot be converted to color later. The portrait picture control is great for recording movies of people. It offers pleasant skin tones and textures. The landscape picture control is good for recording movies of scenery or cities outdoors. Let's modify a picture control. First, we'll select a picture control to modify. We'll choose Vivid. To make modifications, press the right arrow on the multi-selector. Settings can be adjusted using the arrows on the multi-selector. To make the color on the Vivid picture control a little more saturated, select Saturation, and use the multi-selector to choose a value toward the plus side of the scale. Press OK to save changes. Picture controls that have been modified are shown with an asterisk in the picture control menu. The D7100 has an effects mode that you can use not only for capturing still images, but for movie recording as well. The effects mode has seven different effects modes that can be used for movie recording. To select an effects mode, the Live View Movie Selector must be set to Live View. Then press and hold the lock release and rotate the mode dial to effects. You can rotate the main command dial to choose the desired special effect. The first option is night vision. This mode is useful when you want to shoot movies in the dark with very high ISOs. Movies recorded in this mode are black and white and have digital noise. Rotate the live view movie switch to movie and press the shutter button halfway to focus. The camera may struggle to autofocus if there is not sufficient light. If that is the case, you may want to focus manually then simply press the movie record button to begin recording and press it again to end recording. With this mode, the use of a tripod will help reduce blur. To select another effects mode, rotate the Live View movie switch to Live View and rotate the main command dial to choose the effects mode. The next mode is Color Sketch. Movies recorded in this mode will have only the color outlines of objects visible creating a watercolor painting-like effect. When color sketch effects movies are played back, the movie will look like a slideshow of a series of still images. Note that autofocus is not available during movie recording with this mode. 
The next effects mode is the miniature effect. Using this mode, you can make distant subjects appear to be very small, and the movie will play back at a very high speed, which creates a more dramatic effect. To record a movie with the miniature effect, set the live view movie switch back to movie, and then use the multi selector to position the focus area. Next, press OK to view the options for the miniature effect. You can use the multi selector to choose to have the in focus area of the image to be wide or narrow, and you can choose to have it be horizontal or vertical in the frame. Press OK when you're finished making your selections. Now, press the shutter button halfway to focus and press the movie record button to begin recording. Note that with the miniature effect, sound recording is disabled and autofocus is not available while the camera is recording. The next effects mode is selective color, which will allow you to select only one color to be visible and the other colors will be black and white. Press OK to activate the selective color options. Position the camera so the color you'd like to select is in the small yellow frame at the center of the screen and press the up arrow on the multi selector to choose that color. Now, using the up and down arrows on the multi selector, you can adjust the range of hues that you'd like the camera to include. You can choose from levels 1 through 7. If you choose 1, there will be a narrower range of colors shown in the final movie. If you choose 7, there will be a broader range of colors. You can rotate the main command dial to select up to two additional colors in the same way. When you're finished making selections, press OK. You can press the shutter button halfway to focus and the movie record button to begin recording. The next effects mode is silhouette, which is great to use outdoors at sunset to capture a silhouette movie of your subject. To use this mode, simply auto focus and begin recording. The next effects mode is high key. You can use this mode when you're recording movies of a scene that is very bright. The high key mode makes movies appear to be filled with light. The last effects mode is low key. With this mode, the camera will capture the atmosphere of dark images and still retain prominent highlights. An important part of a great movie is the audio. The Nikon D7100 has a built-in stereo microphone for recording sound in movie mode. And it also has a connector that will allow you to use an external microphone. Let's discuss the camera's audio recording features now. The built-in microphone will record sound automatically by default. To access the camera's microphone settings, Press the menu button and enter the shooting menu. Here, scroll to the movie settings option and press OK. Now, select microphone. There are two options for auto sensitivity and manual sensitivity. The auto sensitivity option is a good setting to choose when you want the camera to automatically determine proper audio levels. When auto sensitivity is used, the camera will attempt to keep the audio level in a good range to avoid clipping which is when the sound becomes distorted. When you're using the auto sensitivity microphone option, the camera will compensate for very loud and very quiet sounds by bringing everything to an average level. If you'd like to have more control over the microphone sensitivity, you can choose manual sensitivity and press the right side of the multi selector. Here you can use the multi selector to choose from levels ranging from 1 to 20. A good general rule of thumb is to keep the audio levels in the white or yellow range, usually between negative 12 and 0 dB. This range will help ensure that your sound in your movies is not clipped or distorted. With the D7100, you can control the camera's microphone sensitivity settings not only through the menu system, but also in live view. To make adjustments to the microphone settings in Live View, press the I button and select the microphone option. Here you can use the multi selector to adjust the sensitivity level. You can choose from levels 1 through 20, or you can choose auto sensitivity or microphone off.
The D7100 has a headphone connector, which will allow you to use a pair of headphones to monitor the sound while you're recording movies. If you have a pair of headphones connected to the camera, you can adjust the sensitivity of the headphones when the camera is in live view. This is done in the same way as adjusting the microphone levels. Press the I button and select the headphone option. Here you can use the multi-selector to adjust the volume. You can use the top and bottom of the multi-selector to choose the volume level of between 1 and 30, or you can turn the headphone volume off. When you're recording movies, you may find that the built-in microphone records the sound from the lens focusing or from controls being accessed on the camera body. For better quality audio, you can connect an external microphone to the camera for movie recording. The D7100 has a standard 1 8 inch microphone connector. If you'd like to record professional audio in movie mode with your D7100, you may want to consider purchasing an external XLR adapter. Nikon has produced many lenses and types of lenses since they began producing film SLR cameras. Since 1959, Nikon lenses have been produced using the F mount, meaning that they will fit any Nikon body with the same style mount. However, there are a few things that are important to know and remember if you're considering using older style lenses on your Nikon D7100. First, lenses that were produced prior to 1979 pre-AI lenses will cause serious damage to your camera's mirror, so do not try to attach one of these to your D7100 body. If you have questions about your lens, refer to your camera's owner's manual for a complete list of incompatible lenses and accessories. Most lenses produced after 1979 or AI lenses can be safely attached to your camera body. But these are lenses that are non-CPU, meaning that they will not automatically have the ability to meter or communicate with the camera. They are also manual focus lenses. One of the benefits of the D7100 is that you can input lens data for these lenses through the camera's menu system. Doing this will enable many of the features that are available on CPU lenses, most importantly including the matrix metering option. Lenses that were produced after 1986 are considered to be CPU lenses and are generally fully compatible with the D7100 camera body. Most of them will autofocus and are capable of sharing important data with the camera body. A CPU lens can communicate with the camera body via these CPU contacts. These contacts will share a variety of information with the camera, including metering information as well as focusing distance. The lenses produced by Nikon today are CPU lenses and are identified as either a type G or D lens. The G or D is shown on the lens barrel. The main difference between these two types of lenses is that the D lenses include an aperture ring like this, while the G lenses do not. Now that we've discussed a little about lens compatibility, let's discuss choosing a lens. With a wide variety of lenses in Nikon's current lineup, it can seem overwhelming to know what lens or lenses will help you with the type of movies you're shooting. When shopping for a lens, you'll notice that all of the lenses have a maximum aperture or f-stop. Smaller numbers like f1.4 or f2.8 are considered to be faster lenses because they allow a lot of light into the camera. If your lens has a range of apertures, note that the largest aperture can only be used at the widest focal length. And if you're using the zoom on the lens, the widest aperture will change. This is how the aperture or aperture range is indicated on the lens barrel. The maximum aperture of the lens is important to keep in mind when you're shopping for a lens especially if you're planning on shooting in low light conditions or if you're looking to create photos with a very shallow depth of field. After the maximum aperture of the lens, the next thing that you'll need to consider is the focal length. Nikon lenses are available in a wide range of focal lengths, each with its own benefits and uses. The focal length on a lens is the first series of numbers on a lens barrel 
and it's measured in millimeters. This lens, for example, is a 24 to 85 millimeter lens, or the focal lengths range from 24 millimeters to 85 millimeters. Lenses that have a range of focal lengths, like this 24 to 85 millimeter lens, are zoom lenses. Zoom lenses have the ability to get closer or farther away from a subject without ever actually moving the camera. Lenses that have only one focal length, like this 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, are prime lenses. Prime lenses do not have zooming capability, but many videographers prefer them because of the great clarity and the shallow depth of field they offer. With this understanding of focal lengths and millimeters, we can discuss some of the different ranges of focal lengths as well as the lens categories that different focal lengths fall into. Lenses that are less than 50 millimeters are considered to be wide angle lenses. So the 24 to 85 that we just talked about could fall into the wide angle range because it goes down to 24 millimeters. Wide angle lenses are great for landscape shots as well as situations where space is limited and you want to include as much of a scene as possible. Mid-range lenses have between 50 and 85 millimeters. This range of focal lengths is great for family snapshots, portraits, and vacations. The 24 to 85 lens also falls into the mid-range category. These lenses are often referred to as walk-around lenses because they're so versatile and can be used for a variety of subjects and shooting scenarios. Telephoto lenses are lenses with over 85 millimeters, and they're great for getting closer to your subject. Sports and wildlife videographers use telephoto lenses extensively to zoom in on the subject. Telephoto lenses are also great for getting amazing close-up shots of flowers or other small objects. If you are shooting videos of very small objects and want to have the ability to capture even the smallest details, you'll want to look into a dedicated close-up or a micro lens. The focal lengths for dedicated close-up lenses range between about 60 millimeters and 200 millimeters. In addition to apertures and focal lengths, there is one more important feature that you should consider when you're shopping for a Nikon lens, vibration reduction or VR. Vibration reduction will help you get crisp movies when you're hand holding the camera. If you're using a tripod, you'll probably want to turn vibration reduction off. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Nikon D7100. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to get the most out of your camera. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Just select the topics you want to review from the main menu. Watch for more Quick Pro guides on using newly released cameras. Thanks for watching. Thank you.